going to clean this up and get it ready to do an indoor grow area. So I just thought I would do a little time lapse and uh, just let you know what we're doing here. friends it's been a long time since I've done a garden update so I wanted to give an update before we have to start moving things outdoors it's really been a work in progress a daily work in progress things have changed we have bought certain grow lights and then didn't like them and bought other ones and so all of this was an experiment it's been fun trying out different things and seeing what works and what doesn't and the bag germination method has gotten a lot easier. Um, it, there was a little bit of a learning curve, but after I figured it out, um, things have been doing better. So the, the plants that I started with, some of them didn't do very well. I don't know if that was just the type of plant um, or vegetable, or if it was something that I did wrong. So. Um, but the things that I did, like during our second wave of germination, um, did a lot better and things continued to do well. So let's check it out. Okay, so we started out with the shelf on the left and we ordered two different kinds of lights, I guess three different kinds. So we have these black bar lights up here um, two different ones and we kept those because we can hang them and and they've just worked out um, but I think our favorites have been these little strip lights they're two foot long they can daisy chain together let's see there I kind of got it wired but um, when we added the second shelf we ordered different lights and didn't like them as much so um, because these were not available on Amazon anymore um, but then I just happened to check one night before I went to bed and they were available again so I ordered another set and was able to daisy chain them together um, across the shelves so, so I've only used three plugs for um, what 12 lights one two yeah because there's four four here four here and four here so that's worked out really well we did order these lights too I, again I don't like them as much um, they can hang but they kind of turn they don't stay straight and um, they don't seem to be as bright I also bought a second heat mat. If you remember, I was germinating with the one, um, and that's still down here on the table um, with some bags sitting on it. But I realized that some seeds need light or cool temperatures when they germinate, so um, my second mat is at slightly um, lower temperature. It was lower before we moved a heater in here um, with the heater I think things have been doing a little better so let's check out the plants so we have these are peas and they've done really well as you can see they've sprouted right up um, they're gonna have to go outside soon I think um, and they you can see these are obviously the oldest um, germinated ones and then these are the newer ones we have a whole tray of those and um, we have chamomile here if you can see where some of them are I think there's one um, they're kind of small I wasn't sure how they would do I read that chamomile seeds are usually broadcast or put into a 
a flat pack of some sort. And when they germinated in the bag, they were so tiny and tangled together, I wasn't sure how I was going to separate them. So I just ended up putting them, ripping up the paper towel pieces and laying it directly on the soil. And then once they rooted themselves, I took the paper towel off. And they've done pretty well. So in the back here we have cauliflower for the first, uh, what, three rows. And then we have Brussels sprouts starting here. And our the cold hardy things have done really well, uh, not surprisingly, since it was pretty chilly down here in the basement. And then the next one is red onions. It's a whole tray of red onions. These were one of the first things I did and they haven't done very well at all. So we'll have to see, um, probably direct sow some red onions here soon and get these into the ground and see how they do. But um, so we have some, I mean, they're, they're not doing very well at all. Looks like maybe a half dozen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a little one. Anyway, green onions uh, were also one of the first things I did. And yeah, you can see some of them have done better than others. Some of them are, are nice and tall. Um, but others have like stunted or died off. This tray doesn't have anything in the first two rows right now. The second, these three rows are hyssop. Um, these haven't done very well either. There's one, two, and three, I think. Yeah, just three. And, um, but since we brought the heater down here, I decided to germinate some of them in the soil rather than the bags and see how that does, see if we get any new ones. Parsley, eh, parsley hasn't done very well either. Um, a bunch germinated. I have, let's see, eight, nine, ten of, ten of these blocks filled in. Two are still open. Um, but only three, four, really transferred well um, and even not very well the, these are kind of dying like this one looks pretty good um, but these are kind of shriveled so herbs have not done that great let's see next back in the back we have two full trays of beets and those look awesome and I'll have to thin those out soon I didn't realize that beets, one beet seed is actually like multiple beets. So um, you're supposed to thin them out. So I did two whole trays and that's maybe more than what we want. <laughs> um, up front we have calendula, which is looking pretty cool. Um, and I, because some of those um, didn't transfer well after germination. I germinated some more and um, I'm just waiting for those to come up in some of these blank spots. And we have St. John's wort, which um, again was kind of like the chamomile where it was just so tiny. And I'm not even sure if you can see a little bit of green here. Um, Trying to find another one. So I just kind of placed them on the soil because it said that St. John's wort, um, when you germinate it anyway, you just place it on the soil. It needs light and it needs some cooler temperatures. That was one of the ones I did on the extra heat mat. So um, once it germinated, here's a little one back here. Then I just placed it on the soil essentially but they really haven't grown. And then when I brought the heater down here, I ended up, like the hyssop, um, adding more to the soil itself to see if they would germinate. 
Celery is another one. Didn't work in the bags, so I tried just putting it directly into the soil blocks, and I'm still waiting to see if that comes up. I only did that a few days ago. Um, garlic chives and chives, another one that didn't either didn't work in the bags or didn't do very well once I transferred it to soil. So um, I put I tried to germinate those directly into the soil too the other day with the celery. So we'll see if those come up. Um, fennel. Fennel has done pretty well. We have a bunch of those. And my cat is trying to get attention here. Yeah. Yesterday, she knocked over this bottom tray. It was filled half with beet, uh, not beets, um, kale and half with cabbage. She knocked the whole thing over. So I had to find all of the plants on the ground and um, it ended up working out because I was able to put them in a different container with um, with another cold hardy thing, broccoli. Let's see, in the back we have asparagus and there's one really tall one there. Those are doing pretty well. For the, for the longest time, uh, I should say, they took a long time to get going, but um, they're looking pretty good now. And then we also have echinacea, which, Mary, stop. Which only has a few back here. They didn't do very well. There's one here, one here, and one here. And um, so I ended up putting more of those in a bag the other night um, to try to germinate more. These, like this one, just developed that big leaf up there. Let's see. Then we in the back we have um, more basil, holy basil, and dill. But you really, like you can see some of the dill sticking up there. But the basil and holy basil, um, basil and holy basil. Well, all the herbs actually are some of the first things I did, and then I put them into um, these large pots together, like four per pot, and they didn't grow. Um, I don't know what happened. They all died. So I've done more and I'm putting them in soil blocks this time. We'll see how they do. Um, over here, this is something I just put into the soil last night. These are wallflowers. So, um, we have quite a few of those. Looks like the transplant's doing pretty well to soil. And then here we have a whole tray of tomatoes. San Marzano tomatoes are uh, Roma tomatoes, and then we have cherry tomatoes. I had some extra, so I just put them here in the last row, but um, then there are more cherry tomatoes here together, two rows of those. Two rows of um, Roma tomatoes, and then three rows of this brown tomato, which is one that Dan's grandpa saved. I think it came from England. Uh, which is apparently really good. So I'm glad we were able to get those growing. Up here, I started to um, chit, they call it, C-H-I-T, um, chit sweet potatoes. I just did this the other day too. A lot of these things are um, just within the last week. So we'll see how those do. Um, these seeds up here on my other mat still are just not doing anything. Um, the catnip seeds are were old um, that I got from someone, and I, so I wasn't sure if they were going to germinate anyway. I had them in the dark um, in the towel on the heat mat and decided to bring them out into the light, and um, so they still haven't done anything. So oregano hasn't done anything and then here was my celery that I started way like one of the very first things and it never did anything which is why I tried to put them um, directly into soil this tray is a couple rows of jalapenos a lot of bell peppers more bell peppers than I planned on doing but 
they did well so I just planted them all and then I still have three rows at the end that's open for something else okay and then this tray um, is let's see what that oh this is the broccoli so we have 16 um, broccoli plants over here if I can bring it out and then we have cabbage and kale and the cabbage and kale are the things that I had to pick up off the floor last night and replant and um, then I went ahead and added the broccoli to this tray too since they'll all be planted outside about the same time. Some of these after they were on the floor and I had to clean out these pots um, were looking a little droopy last night but it looks like they're all coming back. This one's still a little droopy but down here are the only herbs that survived my first round. So we have, what is this, two cilantro here, and they're starting to get their first true leaves. We have three more cilantro here, and three more here. So cilantro did well. We only have one little dill plant here. And then this is just a tray of extras. Like I said, I did way too many beets. And um, so I have 12 more beet seedlings. Um, that's empty right now. And this is an extra pea plant that I had. So other than what's in soil right now, I do have some more that I'm germinating and then um, next week I'll be due to start some new things. So these are the brown tomatoes from Dan's grandpa and it looks like one more. We might get one more out of this batch. And then um, parsley has not sprouted any yet. Cilantro. Mm, looks like cilantro has. A, there's a good one. Yeah, yeah so cilantro is starting. Mm, I don't know that we need more cilantro, but we do want to do indoor and outdoor herbs, so that'll be good. These are the Roma tomatoes, and it doesn't look like any more of those are sprouting. Cherry tomatoes. Doesn't look like we're going to get any more of those. Okay, this is the new dill. Um, these are just the remaining. I did start that new tray with basil, holy basil, and dill. It looks like we got one more sprouted. Holy basil. Mm, looks like one more. One more new one. And then regular basil. You see one there. And one there, one there. So we're getting a few more basil. These are really cool. These are called Job's Tears. And the plants actually grow beads. Oh, here it is. Okay. So Job's Tears, this is also known as corn beads, a uh, member of the grass family, grows similarly to corn, grains make perfect beads. And I thought they would be cool to do Christmas gifts with or something. So this is what the seeds look like and they've already started to germinate. 
you can see. So they're pretty neat. And then this was another tomato that Grandpa had saved, but it doesn't look like any of these are going to germinate. So we may try another batch of those. We'll see. And then these are ones that have already been put into soil. I was just waiting to see if any more would sprout. So yeah, we have some, some more bell peppers. Doesn't look like any more jalapenos are going to sprout. Looks like we do have a couple more fennel. And then more echinacea. And we're getting some good ones there. So hopefully those will do better than the ones I already have in soil. As for the things we still need to do, I think I've done all of the four to six week stuff. Next would be the two to four week. I have marigolds, chard, corn. I haven't decided if I'm going to start indoors or not. Uh, we have all the herbs. And then later on we'll have, closer to our last frost date, we'll have butternut squash, gourds, microgreens, nasturtiums, pumpkins, sunflowers, zinnias, zucchini, green beans. Um, these will be bush beans. And um, watermelon, cantaloupes and other melons, and cucumbers. So we still have some fun things to go. I'm down here multiple times a day checking on these things. It's been fun to watch and some, some things just within a day have so much change. So we'll see how things turn out. <laughs>